the Garnet Trust Hour on your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5, the game. And welcome in to the Garnet Trust Hour here on 107.5, the game. Tyler Head and Wes Mitchell along with you in the Herndon Chevrolet Studios. And today's special guest, none other than Jeremy Smith from the Garnet Trust joining us for today's show. And obviously, uh, we've enjoyed having so many great guests coming here from the various uh, Gamecock uh, sports teams. And uh, Jeremy you're, is the reason those guys and girls have been able to come in here. And uh, we certainly thank you for that. And uh, we've really been enjoying getting to do this here on 107.5 The Game. Yeah, I appreciate you guys having me. I feel like the, the bar's been lowered a little bit uh, with me being in the studio today, but uh, really excited <laughs> to be here. Jeremy, do you listen to the Garnet Trust Hour? I absolutely do, yeah. I, I have to sometimes go and listen to it uh, after the fact, uh, depending on meetings and so forth. But, yeah, I do try to catch it uh, as much as I can. How impressed have you been with literally every single South Carolina student athlete as far as them coming in and the way they have represented the school? I feel like we've gotten – with pretty much every uh, student athlete, a view into sort of their daily life to their approach uh, to athletics. But just overall, man, such impressive uh, representatives of South Carolina. Oh, my gosh, yeah. it's It's been it, it's been crazy. I, I usually, uh, after the show's over, I get a text from Chris um, just to give me kind of a heads up of how it went if I wasn't able to listen. And, you know, it's every single time it's, oh, my gosh, they were awesome. They did such a great job. And you know, I'm waiting for the, the other shoe to drop where, where something doesn't go as well. But, yeah, we're really uh, lucky to have such great student-athletes on campus and uh, able to bring them onto a medium like uh, the radio here to, to talk a little bit more about uh, their lives outside of their sport and, and I guess, some behind the scenes of uh, inside the sport as well. But, uh, yeah, it's it's been fantastic. I am so excited to be able to continue to bring more athletes on uh, in the coming weeks. I'll say some of them have really good – personalities for the radio we've been very surprised by some of them and their natural ability behind a microphone oh my gosh yeah i'm uh, yeah i'm amazed especially at the age right so i mean you're getting a lot of these athletes who uh, are still you know in their teens if you will and uh, and they're able to come on and, and really talk eloquently a little bit about their but their lives and stuff and uh, yeah it's 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 impressive to say the least yeah and i've told several of them like look with your knowledge of your sport already you're ahead of the game of you know people like me to start with so then if you add in that element of being able to talk on air, sort of the broadcast personality side, then you've got really a great opportunity, I would think, if they want it. Uh, you know, a lot actually a lot of the uh, players we've had on have a future probably at the next level professionally, but then as far as I, I think the skills that you're already building for after your athletic uh, career, then there could be several opportunities for a lot of these uh, uh, players. And I, I think, Jeremy – there, there's some benefit to NIL and just the NIL space that maybe gets lost from time to time that maybe people don't think about, and that is the life skills that you're building. Absolutely. You know, and, I, and I'm not really most of the time talking about, you know, radio hosting skills, but more like the management of your time, the management of everything that it takes to be a professional athlete, the management of everything it takes just to be an adult as far as managing your money, your taxes, your time, and pretty much it gives you a quick, uh, I won't even say glance because it's more than a glance, is an early preview of what your life is going to look like as you become either a professional athlete or a professional non-athlete. No, absolutely, and I think that's one of the things that we're striving to do here uh, that not all universities are taking advantage of, Is is and we talk a lot about it's not about the four years you're at USC, it's about the 40 years after you're here. We want to make sure that we are equipping these student-athletes with, like you said, the financial literacy piece, uh, media training, uh, etiquette training, if they're going to be sitting down with a donor um, at, a, uh, at a at a nice dinner and so forth. We want to make sure that they have all those skills, and those skills ultimately can then transfer into the business world. They're building a brand, if you will, right? So a chance for us to be able to uh, to do that is is awesome. And how do you kind of develop these relationships with the student athletes and decide who's going to do what specific things and like deciding who's going to come in here for the Garnet Trust Hour when we do it twice a week? Sure, absolutely. I think I think a lot of it is just knowing what their uh, their interests are uh, and what uh, the sport they're in and where that sport is uh, in the in the season or, or after the season and uh, and so forth. So I really lean on uh, on Chris and Wes to really kind of guide me on who the who they like to have in the studio and. Uh, and then take that and uh, advice and usually uh, get those folks here. Did you hear the Garjula 
interview last week. Well, I, after I just told you how much I did listen, I do listen to the you show. Missed that I, one. Did, I did miss that one. I do need to go back because uh, Nick is he's one of my favorites. I love Nick to death. It, it was outstanding. Uh, Chris was asking about the depth chart, and um, he's like, Chris, I think you're trying to get me in trouble here, man. Just kind of called Chris out, like just uh, <laughs> like you you uh, you could tell like the. He's got a little bit still of the New York accent, which is is always fun. Right. Um, he was talking about uh, how he and Limbo kind of share that together, and how he's not ready for the summer heat here in Columbia. Yet we tried to. He's like, guys, everybody has warned me about Columbia, South Carolina in the summer, but um, just uh, fantastic getting to see the different personalities that are on the team and uh, on the various teams. And and man. Actually, one of my favorite parts so far about Garnet Trust Hour, Jeremy, has been learning about some of the student athletes that I personally did not have as much knowledge on. The the, and I'll just say general blanket statement because I think there's enough evidence of this to say it. The women's teams, student athletes at the University of South Carolina, are amazing, unbelievable. And um, if if I if I owned a business and I was looking, I don't care what they're majoring in. If I owned a business and I was looking for, and I had roles that needed to be filled by that. It was okay to film with people fresh out of college. I'm that's who I'm hiring. I'm going to uh Shelly Smith, uh, you know, the women's soccer team. I'm going to the women's basketball team. I'm uh, going to the track and I'm saying I'm hiring all your student athletes. If they're not playing at the next level. Absolutely, and it, and it starts with the coaches. I mean, who they recruit, and that's one thing that's so awesome about the opportunity I have here to uh, help build out the NIL space is that we we have unbelievable coaches uh, at the university, and they are really recruiting top notch uh, character individuals, and that really does help tremendously. But you're you're absolutely spot on. The the women's sports. Um, those athletes are, are fantastic. I l- absolutely love working with them. We actually have one of the uh, soccer players on the women's team who's actually interning with us this uh, uh, this summer, Taylor Jacobson, and she actually just was at the NIL Summit uh, on behalf of the university in Atlanta. So, um, again, great, great, great uh, folks to work with, and it's just uh, it's kind of a pinch me moment on a daily basis. Now, when all the NIL things were coming about, did you think it was going to be a little bit tougher to gain, to find some interest in some of the non revenue sports like women's soccer, those kind of things that you know aren't at the forefront when people think of college athletics? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think I think it's I think the, the, it's still an uphill battle to some degree, right? You have to there, there's only so much uh, money around, whether it comes from a business or comes from a donor. Um, and uh, the sports, uh, you know, there's a lot of sports at USC, and we have a lot of uh, of really good teams and, and so forth. So it, it can be a little bit of a challenge. But, you know, once you get to know these uh, these players going into a business and being able to pitch them, you know, like Wes said, you would want to hire them. It's pretty easy, and we're seeing a lot of traction, especially with the women's soccer team. Um, we're starting to get some traction on the, the volleyball team as well um, and uh, hope to expand that into uh, the other sports like softball, equestrian, and so forth here in the coming months. Hanging out here with Jeremy Smith. He pops in and keeps us updated on everything going on with South Carolina NIL over at Garnet Trust uh, every so often. So, Jeremy, I, I guess let's go big picture. What do Gamecock fans need to know? What do we need to know? What is – Kind of the the latest headlines as far as Garnet Trust goes right now. How how is everything going? Like, uh, do you feel like South Carolina is um, in an improving spot in the NIL space? I personally feel like it's kind of one of those things you never you never want to say you've arrived. Like you've no. you've never arrived. Right. It, it's one of those things you're just constantly building, and and maybe maybe you have goals, and you're trying to all right, let's hit this goal. Then once that goal is hit, you're right on to the next one. But how have you felt that the progress has been here at South Carolina? I'd say the last 90 days uh, and the 90 days before that have just been unbelievable. Um, you know, I, the Garnet Trust started back in uh, November of 21. And, you know, for the most part, NIL was still very new then. Um, Garnet Trust was one of the first, call it 15, uh, to collectives to start. Um, but we've seen it evolve over the last, uh, you know, call it 18 months where, it's starting to really gain some traction. Um, people are starting to understand what we're trying to do, how we're trying to do it. Um, we can't, you know, we're never going to raise the, the the money that other schools have, um, but that's okay. We're, we don't need that. We just need to be in the conversation with uh, uh, these athletes and, and and giving them an opportunity to to really capitalize on their name, image, and likeness. But I mean, they don't they don't come to the school for the money, and if they do, they're probably not the right athlete for the uh, for the coaches to begin with. They should be coming here because it's an opportunity to get a great education 
and also to to get, to do better in the sport that they're playing in and get that uh, that coaching that they need. That should be the determination. Uh, and then after that, NIL can come into the conversation. But um, I think we're doing okay. We, there's still a lot of room for improvement. Um, I think education is the biggest uh, hurdle we have to get over and un- having people understand what we're doing it, how we're doing it, um, how their investment is being protected and so forth. Uh, it's uh, it, it, that's that in itself is an uphill battle. We I face that daily. And, and when you say education in this context, you're more referring to education of South Carolina fans and Correct. local business owners in terms of, hey, this is where your money is going. This is how this works. And this is how you can sort of create that handshake relationship between business and player, essentially. Right. Absolutely. I mean, whether you're getting money from a from a donor or from a business, there has to be some return on that investment, right? We, everybody looks for that. I think early on in the NIL, so many donors and so many businesses just threw money out there. There wasn't a very much return on that investment. And then when they went back, uh, those, those other schools went back and said, hey, we need some more money. It's hard to justify. And that's one of the things that we're doing differently here is we're really putting together a strong marketing plan, really giving these donors an opportunity to understand that there is a true return on their investment, being able to show them that, um, and being able to protect their money as well. I mean, we, in the contracts that we have, we, we definitely want to make sure that we're protecting uh, those investments. If, uh, if a student athlete decides they, they want to go into the transfer portal and leave, uh, if they want to go and, uh, and, and do something in a different city, uh, we, we want to make sure that, that their money is protected so we, we have clauses in there that kind of protects us. I want to go back to something you said a moment ago where you know that you know, there are other schools out there that you know, are, are bringing in more, have more avenues for money and, and that kind of stuff. How much are you looking at what other schools are doing and kind of comparing yourself specifically within the SEC. And everybody talks about, you know, Florida and Auburn being some of the schools that, that bring in a lot. And we saw what happened with the Jaden Rashada situation down there at Florida, which we can touch a little bit more on uh, later. But but how much are you looking at what other schools are doing and comparing yourself to them? As much as possible. Uh, that, that The biggest piece uh, that I'm frustrated with with the NIL is the transparency piece. Um, there's so many rumors going on about how much uh, student athletes are getting in NIL deals. The majority of that is is not true. Um, so I do try to dive as much as I can and build relationships with our competitors, if you will, in the marketplace, which has been really really, really helpful because when we get together, we can talk a little bit more candidly and uh, of what's going on in, on their on their turf, so to speak. And uh, um, but yeah, I tr- I try to stay as, an, as as attached to it as I possibly can because there's no roadmap, there's no blueprint. I we're we're kind of uh, out there trying to figure this all out at the same time. So. Um, having that data is imperative to us. And right now I have one of our interns who's a, a numbers guy really working on building out uh, a lot of data for us that we can refer back to that will help us uh, better um, spend the money that we get. By the way, guys, real quick update here. It was just announced that South Carolina Super Regional will be uh, the Friday, Saturday, Sunday slot. Game one, South Carolina versus Florida, 6 p.m. on ESPN2. Game two, Saturday at 3 p.m., and uh, that's also on ESPN2. Game three, if necessary, uh, time TBA. Jeremy, you've been watching some Gamecock baseball this last uh, week? Yeah, I was actually able to go to the two of the three games. I uh, went on Friday and Sunday. And, uh, man, it's so great to, to see the team healthy again. And, and uh, I mean, they just look totally different. It's like they, they were early in the season. It's uh, it's fantastic. And I think they're starting to hit their stride. And can't wait to see how they do in Gainesville this weekend. It, it was kind of funny. We had So we had Ethan Petrie in. Um, so we've had what, as far as when I've been here, we've had Petri, Casas, and um, at Messina. Messina. I think uh, did Hicks come in? I think Hicks came Hick, in. Too. Yeah, that was with Chris. I wasn't here for that, but yeah, H- uh, Hicks came in. Um, all four were outstanding. But uh, Petri comes in. This was like at the beginning of the season. The most laid back, unassuming, non. Uh, you know, there was no hint of I'm the best. You know, freshman in the country, and then. And I remember first off being like, all right, this kid's way bigger than I expected him to be. And then obviously he just goes off, has this historic season. But um, it it was – and I think fans sort of got this, hopefully from the interview, completely humble, no sense of just like I'm – you know, I'm this superstar, this budding superstar. And uh, I I think that's really cool to see the guys too that just are um, good-hearted people. Uh, you know, as well. Absolutely. I mean, it's, yeah, again, it goes back to the coaches. Uh, Kingston is, is doing a fantastic job of attracting the right type of talent here, the right uh, um, uh, young men to, to come and, and represent the university. And, and, yeah, they're fantastic. I love, absolutely love working with them. And I think it's a redundant theme for me is I, I really do enjoy work with all these athletes because there are so many great ones on campus. 
We'll have more with Jeremy Smith coming up next, talking NIL on the Garnet Trust Hour here on 107.5 The Game. It's the Garnet Trust Hour on your home of the Gamecocks. 107.5 The Game. Let's touch on Phoenix with it. And welcome back in to the Garnet Trust Hour here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler Head and Wes Mitchell along with you with today's guest, Jeremy Smith from the Garnet Trust, hanging out with us, giving us the uh, insights into all things NIL. And uh, as we were talking about a few moments ago, I brought up what happened with the Rashada situation down there at Florida, which is kind of the shining example people are pointing to when discussing NIL. And a lot of that revolved around promises being made that weren't backed up where he was offered somewhere in the neighborhood of 13 million dollars by the collector down there and then when it came time to pay him it's like well the money's not there you know people not backing up what their promises were in the nil space how do you weed out these bad actors and make sure people are going to back up what they say they're going to do (laughs) well it's 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 very difficult uh you know we're we're not allowed to engage with the student athlete until they are uh, you know, enrolled in uh, in school and on campus, if you will. So um, we technically can't do any contracts with any of these players. So the the Rashada situation uh, is is pretty much a lot the same as what's happening at other universities, where you have to kind of there's an assumption that there's going to be something there for them when they get on campus, but um, it's not legitimized until it's on paper, uh, and that can't happen again. Like I said, until they're they're enrolled at the school. So, you know, going back to the Jalen Rashada thing, you know, I, I've had the luxury of speaking to uh, his representation as, as well as a lot of the other folks who are tied to the collectives or the former collectives at uh, University of Florida, and uh, it was a messy situation, uh, and, and it's unfortunate for them. Um, I'm glad it was them uh, that did that because we were able to learn a little bit about some of the mistakes that other collectives are making and uh, uh, to make sure that we don't uh, we don't fall into the same trap. But, uh, you know, one of the things that we're, we're we're serious about is we don't spend money we don't have in the bank. Um, we're not writing checks we can't cash. Um, we, we really want to make sure that our word uh, is is good and that whether or not they get more money here than at other schools, which they're not they're going to get what they were 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 promised um and contracted for that's just uh it's important to us it's it's the character that we want to be uh we think it again it carries on the culture that the coaches are building at usc is to to be honest and uh and what we do so uh, i would say the latest news as far as the nil space goes in terms of the ncaa and uh congress and this push for uh, i guess some national legislation is that um, it was announced or reported earlier this week that five collectives are going to be out in Washington to speak on the behalf of the collectives. And, um, you know, I I think maybe the biggest or the next big turn in the NIL space is going to be what comes of this push for legislation. And, you know, Jeremy, I, I think anytime you start to get you know, Congress involved, and it's maybe something that the the nuances are going to be lost on people who aren't in the day to day of this space, like you are, like the other various collectives are. Um, I, I guess first of all, before we dive into it, how um, do you have any feel for what way this might be going? Like, I, I think this is obviously going to shape the direction of the entire NIL space moving forward, but. Um, it is a national law that governs all this possible uh, in the future? Is it possible in the near future, or um, are, we, or are we just all guessing at this point? Uh, 100% guessing. Um, I think it's uh, it's naive for people to think that this is going to be fixed and solved uh, you know, very fast, especially now that it's uh, kind of heading towards Washington in a lot of ways. Uh, we know how long things can take there to, to be resolved. But I do think it's good. I do think the conversations are starting to happen, um, and people are coming up with ideas that, that might help – uh, bring a little bit more um, organization to, to all of this kind of stuff. And, and I know that, uh, you know, for, from Coach Beamer's perspective, um, you know, again, I said this earlier, is the transparency. Being able to, to, to have all the data out there that people can see, I think will change a lot of the perceptions that are out there, um, you know, as far as how much money is, is rolling around, which is it's not nearly what people think it is. And um, uh, I, I don't know where it's going to go. I do think uh, it will eventually get to a point where, um, we 
are on an even playing field, so to speak, um, whether that's some some sort of a cap that the athletes can make or the collectives can pay out or or however that looks. But I think it's going to take a lot of these trips to Washington and a lot of people uh, in the business world who are very smart to, to come up with some creative ideas to either the NCAA will help, um, you know, organize or, or maybe it's a separate entity. I, I don't know. But yeah, right now we're, we're all just guessing. It, there's no idea what's going to happen. When NIL came to be two years ago, was there anything that you would have liked to have seen as far as guidelines when it initially started from the NCAA where maybe we wouldn't be having these same conversations today? Um, well, I mean, it, it, I mean, I can look back and say, I wish there were some things that were put into place, but go, you know, when it first started, it, no one really kind of knew what was going to happen. Um, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to, to, again, I don't mean to be a dead horse here, but I, I really would like there to be some transparency where people could, could go out there and, and say, we know what these players are making. Problem with that is th- there's laws, right? I mean, where do, do college athletes, do they have to, you know, show what they're making in some, uh, professional sports, uh, you know, those contracts are, 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 are public and, and other entities they're not. And I think everyone's trying to be careful with what they try to push because uh, the whole reason we're here is because uh, there was a, a lawsuit that said, you know, the, the, the student athletes have the right to, to benefit off their name, image, and likeness if the schools are making so much money on these TV contracts, et cetera. I, I think the, the the difficult part about walking that line is going to be that on one hand, the transparency probably could be the key ingredient that makes the entire thing um, settle a little bit, for lack of a better way that I can think of to really say it. Yep. While the other hand is going to be, um, you know, these are still not employees, right. and they are still, if they're cashing on their NIL, uh, these are contracts and agreements right. that are completely separate from the university, completely separate from the athletic department, completely separate – actually even from their roles as members of a football team or baseball team or basketball team. So the other argument would be who even has the jurisdiction to be like, you have to tell me how much you're making in what is a really a personal deal that you're making because it's not really you making it as uh, the quarterback. It's technically you making it as who you are as a person Right there, this is there's no pay to play. I mean, we we cannot pay um, a player to play the sport that they're playing. We're we're paying them based off their marketability. Um, and if you are a starting quarterback in an SEC school, uh, chances are your marketability is going to be a lot higher than, unfortunately, a, a second string um, offensive lineman. Uh, it's just the way that it is. It's always been like that. If you even look at the professional sports and and how they're compensated for the things that they do. Um, you know, there's certain positions bring more marketability than other positions. So um, it is difficult. Yeah, it's definitely dif- difficult to, to try to try to, you know, do it in a way that uh, meets all those uh, so-called laws and rules to, to, to be fair to the student athlete. Do You see this lobbying from these collectives up on Capitol Hill going anywhere? Any, any confidence that it will? Um, I, I don't know that it really goes anywhere specifically, but I do think it's you start to see a little bit of, you know, uh, a company line that, that, that everyone's going to be saying. So the SEC is going up there. I guess they, they, they discussed that in their meetings in Destin this past week. And so there, a lot of the SEC coaches are heading up there. I know Coach Saban's going up there uh, from Carolina. I think Coach Beamer and Coach Staley are going up. Um, and I know Coach Tanner's going. I, I think it's important that they do go. I think it's important that they go out there and they continue to talk about the areas that they are frustrated in. Um, to to try to get some sort of rules changed, I just don't know that it's going to be done in Washington like everyone hopes. But you got to have the conversations to to bring change anyway. So I'm glad that they're doing that. All right, more with Jeremy Smith from the Garnet Trust coming up next on the Garnet Trust Hour here on 107.5 The Game. What we're talking about on 107.5 The Game, sponsored by Love Chevrolet. And welcome back in to the Garnet Trust Hour here on 107.5 The Game. Towerhead and West Mitchell along with you today. Special guest is Jeremy Smith from the Garnet Trust. And uh, Jeremy, I'm, I'm sure you heard this last week. Uh, Eli Drinkwitz, head football coach for Missouri, speaking at the SEC meetings down there in Destin, answered a question in regards to the gambling stuff that's going on in, in college sports. We had the deal with Alabama baseball. We had the stuff going on with Iowa and Iowa State. And he kind of tied his answer back to NIL and putting – what he deemed life-changing money in the hands of college athletes. And that kind of, in his mind, 
leading to some of these problems. What was your reaction to what he said last week? Yeah, I, you know, yeah, I guess it's everyone has their opinion on things. Uh, I, I don't know. There's, there's young adults and and, and heck, uh, even children uh, have have been compensated very well uh, early on in life uh, based on whether they're an actor or model or, or or something else. And and I think yeah, there there are some some pitfalls that come with uh, the responsibility to uh, to manage just kind of money. Um, so it's it's it, there could be some correlation to that, but I think a lot of it too comes to um, how you're preparing those student athletes and, and and what kind of guidance you're giving them uh, when they do get this this money and uh, you know like I said earlier we you know we work with financial advisors we want them to be able to take this money and invest it and and let that money work for them while they're in school so that when they are out of school and they maybe don't make it uh, into the professional ranks they have a lot, nice little nest egg and some of these kids if they were smart enough would put their money away. Uh, and not touch it uh, for 20, 30, 40 years. And next thing you know, their retirement has already been paid for while they're at school. Um, but, uh, you know, it's hard to, to get an 18, uh, you know, to 22-year-old to that's never had much of anything to, to look at it that way. But we're, we're, we're doing that. We're definitely getting phone calls from the athletes that want to speak to the financial advisors. So it's a start. I think as time goes on and we start seeing these stories come out of the, the players that d- did well with their NIL money versus the players who didn't, uh, I think uh, there'll be some uh, some learning and and some uh, some changes to that. Would you have been able to put aside a bunch of money at no. 19 years old? No, I would have been horrible. Same. I would have been absolutely horrible. I mean, you know, and it's in talking to some of the former student athletes, you know, that were here, um, that were very very popular, uh, and they said they they they're like it would have ended very poorly for me. But again, it, it goes back to you know, are we are we going to give these student athletes the tools that they need? To, to make better decisions. I do sit down with each of the athletes face-to-face and we talk through these kind of things. I'm going to be doing that here uh, here this week with some of the other um, athletes that just got on campus. And, and we want to really kind of find out from them what, what are they looking to do with this money and really try to help guide them. Um, shockingly, the majority of them are helping their families out. Their money's going back to their families, helping pay some of the bills that their families are struggling to do. Um, whether they're, you know, a parent is having to work multiple jobs to, to make ends meet, this money goes back to them. Very few of the athletes are, are spending this money recklessly. Uh, there will always be those outliers, and those are the ones that are going to c- carry a lot of the um, a lot of the media attention, if you will. But the majority of these uh, athletes are really trying to help their families better themselves. And, and off of that, when NIL came about two years ago, I think everybody ultimately jumped to the conclusion that you're suddenly going to have college athletes driving around town in Lamborghinis and Ferraris and just throwing money left and right and just kind of overlooking the ability of some of those guys that aren't pulling in millions of dollars to be able to help their families coming from tough financial situations, stuff like that. Is it is it unfair that a lot of people really overlook uh, NIL helping out in that regard? Absolutely. And, and it goes back to this whole education piece that we have to educate the, the fans and the donors and uh, the, the, the like-minded business, businesses in the area uh, is to say that, that there is – a lot of really good things going on in NIL. And, and one of the centerpieces of what we're doing is really working with with charities a, a good bit. I, I'm actually leaving here in a few minutes to go speak with uh, uh, someone about a charitable event that's going to be uh, done that helps benefit Prisma Health. And we're going to have athletes go out to that and spend time and, and help really highlight that charity to, to where they can bring in more money to help, in this case, uh, Prisma and their, uh, and their cancer uh, wing. But yeah, I mean it's it, it it's it, it can be difficult, but you know we we just we really 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 tried to put these these student athletes in positions where they want to give back and they want to we call, call it growing hearts of, of giving back and, and we're starting to see that and um, you know one one quick story here you know the we had the women's soccer team which we just lauded about how great they are um, they went and did some some work with one of the local charities called a therapy place uh, up on Covenant Road. Um, they came out and they did a couple sessions with them that once a month, uh, they went out for about an hour and spent some time with the, with the children that are there. And, uh, unbeknownst to me, I, I started seeing them showing up on dates that we had not had scheduled, uh, for them to go out and work with these charities. And, and I was kind of, you know, taken aback. I didn't really know what was going on and come to find out they had so much fun and they had so much, they felt so much connection to that charity. They go back on their own on a weekly basis and, and spend time and do that. Um, so NIL introduced them to that charity, but now they're taking their personal time and going out and spending time on their own um, just because they felt at home. And that's what we're trying to do here in Columbia is really be um, a, a centerpiece to helping our community partners out and helping these charities out as, as that we try to navigate and make this place a, a better place to live.
Speaking of that, what uh, can we be on the lookout for coming up in terms of uh, big news on the NIL space yeah. or events? Uh, what are y'all working on behind the scenes right now? <laughs> yeah, there's 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 some really really big and exciting things that are that are coming that uh, I can't talk too much about here today, but um, be on the lookout. Uh, there's going to be uh, an event. Um, in late July, that's going to be awesome, and you're going to want to get a ticket to it because it's going to be uh, a night of a lot of fun. Um, and then in August, um, we have another announcement coming up uh, that is going to be a lot of fun. That's going to give us a chance to get more of our branding out there, so people kind of know who we are and what we're doing. Um, but also, we're we're working with a lot of charity people. Uh, like I said, you know, I'm going to work with uh, uh, meet with some folks here as soon as I get off the show that we're going to talk about how we can help uh, at the event that uh, that helps uh, Prisma. And so we're, we're going to be, you know, doing a lot of charitable events as well. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's some really, really cool stuff coming down the pike. Do you have a favorite event that you guys have been able to do so far? Um, Wow. Uh, I, I, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's uh, And to some degree, you know, I know this is cliche, but it's like, you know, which kid do you love the most? I mean, they, they're, they're all different, and they all have their wonderful pieces. Um, I, I thoroughly have enjoyed just the charitable stuff, seeing the kids' eyes. We, we went in December um, with Jay Yurich's original design to Academy Sports that they, they on a yearly basis, they get uh, some, uh, some students from elementary schools that don't have a lot, and they get them a gift card and allow them to go shop for Christmas for themselves and for their families. And we took um, about uh, 12 football players and about 10 uh, women's soccer players in this last December, and my gosh, it was amazing. We were at the checkout line, and these kids only had, uh, you know, a certain amount of money on those gift cards and their their bills came up higher. And I started seeing athletes taking their own money out of their pocket to help supplement that. Um, and, and wow, it just warms your heart. And this is why I think we need to get it out there more to the, the local community to say that we are doing some wonderful things in NIL. Um, don't get caught up in the headlines that you see. Um, about the negatives about that. Sure, they're out there, but they're very, very, very small compared to the majority of good that we're doing. Yeah, and uh, I, I think uh, the more that people learn about things like that, the more that uh, businesses can learn how they can get involved and that um, just the – I think there's maybe sometimes a difference in reality um, and headlines and what grabs the big headlines versus what is actually happening day to day with a lot of these student athletes. So the more we can all do to kind of let people know about that, uh, I think the better. And uh, obviously – uh, GarnetTrust.com. If you are a, if you're a business, you're listening in. If you're a business owner, and uh, you want to learn more about this and learn more about um, everything going on at Garnet Trust, uh, definitely go check out GarnetTrust.com. Follow on social media. I think it's at Garnet Trust on like all the social media platforms. Uh, it's at the Garnet Trust. Yeah, on Twitter. at the Garnet Trust on Twitter. Um, but yeah, no, I think uh, I, I think it's imperative. I mean, there is so much opportunity for local businesses. I mean, we are—it's my job to put together a good plan after speaking with them uh, on on uh, a good return on that investment that they do. But there there is so much that this uh, this community has not tapped into when uh, they can help their businesses out. So yeah, if you are a, a local business and you're looking to uh, to to grow, uh, we can definitely uh, come up with some creative ideas to utilize the student athletes to make that happen. We'll wrap up our conversation with Jeremy Smith on the Garnet Trust Hour coming up next, 107.5 The Game. It's the Garnet Trust Hour on your home of the Gamecocks, 107.5 The Game. And welcome back into the Garnet Trust Hour here on 107.5 The Game. Tyler Head, Wes Mitchell, and today's guest, Jeremy Smith from the Garnet Trust with us for a few more minutes wrapping up today's conversation you know jeremy it wasn't that long ago that uh, ea sports announced that with their new college football video game returning in 2024 that they were going to offer the option for current student athletes to be in the game they would be compensated for that and when you think back to a decade ago with the game going away the uh, obana versus ncaa lawsuit that really kind of got the ball rolling on nil coming to be just a couple years ago what are your thoughts on seeing it all kind of come full circle now yeah well it's going to say well I don't, I don't really play games much anymore but if it, if it was you know back in my 20s this would have saved me a ton of time because I spent countless countless uh, nights putting in rosters from different uh, college teams so we could have the 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 the, the NIL of those players uh, uh, on the game but um, no I it, it's you know it, it did it kind of started there I mean this is all that it was is you know these players are you know pretty much the identical 
person that uh, talent wise that they are uh, on the field uh, in you know in person on this game, and I, I think it's uh, I think it's awesome that it's finally coming back to. It'll be interesting to see what their uh, their cut, if if you will, is. I mean, I, I think you know it should be something of, of a fair balance. Um, but uh, we'll see how that how that comes across. I mean, I know a lot of these big, big, big deals, um, they're just flat fees across the board, and you either opt in or you opt out. Um, I know a lot of the <clears throat> for the major league sports, especially when it comes to to cards, uh, trading cards and things like that, it's just a flat. This is what it is. If you you know you want a card, you you're going to get this amount of money, and that's it. Take it or leave it. Um, so I, I think uh, it'll be fun to see. But I'm I'm super happy to see that it's here because I think it's well deserved. I'm very interested to see what guys are like. Okay, what I I get to be in a game and I get to make, let's say five hundred bucks. That's what's been right. kind of thrown around. This is awesome, right? And which guys are like five hundred dollars for me, right? And try to negotiate something of their own, sure. basically. And then if you're EA, do you even entertain that? Because that may be once one guy, once you give in to one guy, hundred percent. So uh, this was actually I was reading an article on uh on on three and they had asked several athletes at their um actually this was at the uh influencer nil summit and they had asked uh oklahoma quarterback general booty who has the best um nil name in sports right now i think and uh, he was saying how the guys were actually in their locker room were talking about that very thing like what number would make you sort of as a group just be like oh yeah that's cool with us right and he said you know if they're like, hey, 200 bucks, um, that that maybe doesn't do it. But, uh, you know, we actually asked Nicky Memori about it, and he was kind of – we put him on the spot. He was kind of going back and forth on it a little bit in his head, I think. But he said, you know, um, do, do you kind of have to think about the fans there? Like, how does it look if – Oh, gosh, absolutely. If, if you, and I thought it was a great answer. Very good answer. Way he, to go, Nick. I know. He's like – he even used the word selfish. He's like, are you being selfish if you're the guy right. who, you know, your fans want to play this game. You're being offered some money to to be in it. And you're the guy who's like, oh, no, I'm I'm too good to be in the game for that amount of money. Right. Um, so there's going to be some interesting decisions. I imagine there will be a holdout or two. I think at the end of the day, most guys are going to be like, I get some cash. I get to be in the game. I get immortalized. I'm going to be in this game. You know, you can't take that away. Right. And, um, y- you know, wh- what's the pushback from your teammates, too, if you're the only guy? Oh, it's a bad look. I think, it's a, I think it's a completely bad look. I mean, this is um, – you know, I'm 47 years old, and, and if I had the chance to be on a video game, that'd be awesome. I think I'd do it for a free, you know, Bojangles biscuit. I mean, this is <laughs> – this is I absolutely would love to do that. So I, I hope that doesn't happen. It would be funny to see, though, for those who do opt out, what the – how they actually make those – their their so-called uh, player value at that point in time. <laughs> I mean, are they really going to be as good as, uh, as as they would be if they had their name behind it? Who knows? But, oh, yeah, they, they all get yeah. 60 ratings right, right. If, <laughs> if they don't yeah. opt in. Yeah. <laughs> well, and the point we brought up to Nick is, okay, if you don't want to be in the game, then somebody's just going to put you in the game as soon as they get it, and you're right. not going to get any money for it and still be in the game. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think I think it's a bad look. I think everyone should should opt in, but at the same time, I hope uh, EA does give them a fair deal that, uh, that helps uh, them out a little bit. You think $500 and a free game? is fair absolutely that's i think it's that's very fair 100 percent. yeah because i feel like for a licensing deal which is what this is there has to be some equity across the board like it, it has to be like okay for for the betterment like all right think about it like this if i'm the if i'm the key player right i know i'm bringing more value than the 85th guy on the roster but i'm i'm sort of devaluing the overall game by not being in it sure where it's kind of it's kind of like all right this is a way if i if i lend if i lend my nil to this entity for this for this game i'm helping out the 85th guy on the roster the 84th guy you know what i mean like it does if because if all the top guys opt out the whole thing falls apart so and then that screws up everything for everybody right so i think you kind of got to consider the whole the big picture in this sense I think it's a situation where maybe like the first year you see some big name guys opt out, and then once the optics kind of set in those next couple of years, I think everybody will be a little bit more on board with it if there are some people that aren't in the first year. Or so yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think it's. I mean, the game's been away for so long. I think just the sheer uh, fact that it's coming back is going to have a ton of sales. So uh, I would really hope that uh, that the athletes would opt in because uh, 
Uh, this is good. this is going to be a, a a good little uh, release, I think. Well, with something like this coming to fruition, what other kind of doors do you think you could uh, you could see opening in a similar way from something like this? I mean, you know, I, I don't know from a from a uh, you know a licensing side, but you know, we we talk about you know building your brand, being on this game for five hundred bucks or heck even a hundred bucks. You, you, it's you're still able to start building and capitalizing on that brand, and that's what we're really trying to again do is try to give them the tools that they can use so that they have a brand that they could use whether it's in professional sports or whether it's in uh, corporate America. Um, because if they can do that while they're here, um, then then all those doors will be be open. But I, I I don't know. I mean, we could sit here probably for another two hours and just brainstorm on so many different opportunities that um, get that theoretically could pop up that these athletes could capitalize on. Um, but uh, I know we don't have time for that. How much has group licensing been in play uh, within yeah. NIL? It doesn't seem like it, it's been a huge thing. It's not. I mean, it, it's not because part of it is, you know, those deals are you, – you're getting pennies on the dollar uh, mm-hmm. for each piece of, of merchandise that is sold. And unfortunately, you know, for, for – for, they're still college athletes, right? They, they're not going to have the, the 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 jersey sales that Debo Samuel is having over in, in San Francisco, where he's actually probably making a, a good bit of you know money on that mm-hmm. merch. Um, so I, I think it's 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 going to be difficult to do these big licensing deals um, on things like that because I don't think there's going to be a lot of money to be made from the athlete. Um, you know, the people that are going to buy them, buy their stuff, is going to be their families and their friends, uh, unless they're you know a, a national uh, star, and you might get a few more sold then. And then maybe a couple super fans here or there that just want to support. Uh, Absolutely. You know, but I, yet to your point, it's not, it just doesn't, I guess, the math doesn't work out no. for it to be. I don't um, think so. Yeah. Yeah. No, but, not, not the way that it's constructed, you know, now. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, maybe in the future that'll change. But uh, right now, yeah, I don't see that being huge. Do you see a lot of time, like I see um, some guys from the baseball team um, signing a deal with Hey Dude. Right. Um, mm-hmm. did, is it, is it more likely it makes more sense for there to be some deals where it's like, hey, we're going to do a deal with five, six, seven guys from a from a team as yeah. opposed to like the full group? Yeah, no, I think so. So first of all, we, we talk about the marketability. There, there's going to be that small percentage of, of athletes that are going to be more marketable than the others. The hope is that we are able to secure deals for that level of athlete. A lot of times they're called the alpha athletes. And then they're, we're able to bring in other players underneath them to participate in the overall deal that would say, okay, the alpha talent person is going to be our main, our main focus, but we're going to bring six of his or her teammates uh, to participate in this deal. So everyone gets a little bit of the love. And I think we need to see more of that. Um, I think it's, uh, it's important because like you mentioned, the 85th guy on the roster, um, you know, he, for football, he's very important. He's helping prepare those other, you know, 22 guys that are, that are on the field starting a good bit. And I, I would think, you know, there's been talk about what does NIL do to potentially, on the negative, splinter a locker room. Uh, that I would look that as a way to, I mean, how, how much uh, could that help a locker room? If I'm, if I'm the 85th guy and, you know, I make some money because my teammate's looking out for me, that's a right. way I feel like to solidify a yeah. locker room. Oh, I, I think so. And, and again, it's a, I keep saying the word education, but it's not just educating. In, in this case, it's educating the athletes that – you know, certain positions uh, are, are going to bring more opportunity from a marketable standpoint uh, than others. And, and having them truly understand that is is, is really key. Um, but, yeah, it, it could help a locker room out a ton if uh, if the love is spread a little bit more evenly. Um, so hopefully that will happen. All right, that's all the time we have for today's edition of the Garnet Trust Hour. Jeremy, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with us for a little bit. Appreciate you guys having me on and look forward to coming back soon. Absolutely. All right, coming up next is the Gamecock Central Takeover Hour presented by Firehouse Subs on 107.5 The Game.